Hey guys, it's Tony Robbins. Listen, I've got a video here for you today that I think you'll really enjoy. I am, um, for the last, I guess, nine months or so since the economy took its giant uh, collapse all over the world in different areas financially, I've been meeting people that are trying to figure out what to do financially. And I've bought so many people in business who are trying to figure out what to do. Their customers are responding in a different way. They're hanging on to their money and they're concerned. And so I thought, you know, the traditional approaches to business are not making a difference. What I'm best at is modeling. You know, I've always, when I wanted to figure something out, I go to people that are the best in that area and figure out what they're doing and teach myself how to do that and then teach others to do the same once I've proven it's worked with myself. I said, I want to find the best of the best, and I've been really fortunate over the last, as I say, probably seven, eight, nine months to have spent some time interviewing and getting to know and uh, becoming good friends with many of the top people in the Internet marketing. I mean, people that they're not the likely people you normally look at. I look at them as the new money masters. You know, they're guys that, you know, they didn't have the traditional education and ladies that didn't, but they found a way to add value. So whether you're looking for you know, an opportunity to figure out how to have a second income stream or you have some form of business you're considering being in or you're in and you want to learn some tools, I thought I'm going to create some great products for this, but I thought I'd just send you out first a neat little interview that I did with them. These guys called me up and said, can we come by? I'd love to chat with you. I said, well, we're going to chat. Let's put it on film. So we just knocked around, and what they wanted to ask me was, look, you know, we've spent enough time with you. We know you know how to get people to take action. Uh, I said, well, come on over and let me kind of get inside your heads a little bit. Let me see why you follow through. Why do so many people say they're going to do something and then never follow through, and a few people do something inside their head and heart that gets them to follow through? So I just thought you might enjoy this conversation we've had. It's uh, with Frank Kern and, uh, and John Reese, two of the best of the best in this industry. And I, you know, I think you'll find it interesting. Maybe you'll be triggered a little bit to think about what will get you to follow through, too. So this is my little gift to you. I hope you enjoy. We got the dialing. Frank. <laughs> Tony, what's up? <laughs> good thing, man. How about you? I'm good. Listen, we, we got a, uh, we've got a serious issue. Um, that I think is affecting our market, and we need your help. We actually don't know if we can solve this problem, but we think that you can. So we want to we want to barge in today. We're kind of riding around anyway. I know you're shooting and stuff, but if you got a couple minutes, so we can pop by. That sure would be helpful. Okay, well I'm honored if you help me. Come on over. I look forward to seeing you. Okay. See you, man. Right, man. Bye. Look forward to you, John. Bye, bye. Yep. bye. See ya. So why are we in a hotel anyways? They use this place a lot to shoot stuff because it's got a really nice background. Oh, so really it's nice outdoor filming stuff. different guests and interviews yeah. and TV commercials? Hey, man. How's, How's it going? Come on in. All right. Thank you. Hey, hey Tony. What's up? How you doing, man? What's all this? <laughs> doing a little leadership film, man. That's awesome. Good to see you. All right. Thanks for having us, man. Thank you. Yeah, good. Well, come on in. I'm, I'm curious to... What this major problem is that you you got to see me right away about? This sounds like a setup to me. It's baby. a setup. Yeah, I told I told John it was an intervention to, about his glue sniffing problem. So. <laughs> well, come over and sit on my lap. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> so we were doing some talking, and the big problem in our industry, we think, is a bit of a mystery. No one has the exact answer. We were actually talking about trying to figure it out. That you know, so many people in our market get these courses that you know him and I both for our own respective businesses spend hours and hours of time you know recording these um, you know building these these education products these training products to show people how to grow a business or build a business but there's this large segment of our customers in our market that we're in that really don't get results they don't do anything or they're just you know for whatever reason it's not for them it's just you know, we were just talking about how great it would be if there were just, you know, so many more success stories, right? Like if, if everyone who actually bought stuff, not not necessarily just our stuff, but all of the stuff within our community, if the people who bought it, if everyone who bought it just actually used it, you know, and just followed the directions and followed through, how amazing that would be, like what we would accomplish as a community as a whole if that happened. So our challenge is what, what needs to happen, what kind of shifts need to happen to get people to follow through? to get people to actually use the products. You're talking about the same mystery that people have of, you know, why does somebody, you know, get that fat where they're out of control and they hate themselves, but then they go have another piece of chocolate? Or, you know, why does the person who's just, the doctor just told them they have cancer, or lung cancer, and they say, you've got to stop smoking, and some studies show 70% of the people keep on smoking. So you're not talking about a minor issue here, right? It's yeah. part of life. 
But there is an answer because there are people that do follow through, and there are people that never did before, and then they've never followed through in their life, and now finally they break through. And that's what I try to focus on is what those people do. Yeah. You know, in my case, in the business world, I look at people like you, people like Dan Kennedy. Yeah. What do these guys do? Okay, I'm just going to do that to the best of my ability. And sure, you know, it's like, well, Oh, no, I can't write copy as well as Dan Kennedy, or I don't have as much energy and drive as Tony Robbins. Well, but you didn't start so like, what? You, you didn't know? start I mean, out got as, as much Frank Kerr. You didn't start out yeah. who you are. You started out trying to make how much? Come on. $300. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 a week. A week. $300 right? a week, yeah. And you failed at that in the beginning, didn't I you? I failed pretty miserably, yes. <laughs> but it was effortless to fail. <laughs> I was, I mean, it's just like natural. Yeah. But truthfully, you went from 300 bucks. I remember you said you, your first time you believed, if I remember, was when you made like 2500 bucks in like four or five days. It was five days when I was on vacation. While yeah. you were on vacation. That was when the true internet marketing dream was realized, you know, because right. I sold a downloadable product and I wasn't even there. I didn't have to ship anything. I was like, oh my God, this was so great, you know. $2,500. And to me, that was just a gazillion, you know, because my rent, I think, was like $400 or something. And, yeah. and when you told me that story before, and you just did it again, and you get so so, you big grin on your face. Right. You get more excitement on your face than when you it talk about up. doing eighteen. Than when you talked about doing the eighteen million, which I know you're proud as hell of, and you didn't get all the money, but you made eighteen right. million bucks for somebody in twenty four hours, right? Yeah. Okay. But look at your face. <laughs> it's like nowhere near as excited as twenty five hundred bucks in yeah, five it's days, the same baby. Thing, though. I mean, the the twenty five hundred bucks is just as there's no difference. No, I there's even think. more because there was a moment when you recognize what was possible, but you didn't recognize it until you actually experienced it, but you only experienced it because you had to. Right. You had to keep going until you found it, yeah. just like you did. Yeah, you had absolutely. to keep going until you found and it. And it's right? like the validation that the fear doesn't have to matter anymore, that that you don't, there is no other, that, you know, not having the plan B and knowing that you're going down the one path towards what you want. Yeah. It's the validation in your brain that, hey, this works. It may not work yet on the level I want it to, but it, it works. I've right. just proven it to myself. Right. And for that, I, I win. It's game right. over. I've already won yeah. because I've proven it to myself. Right. So it validates everything in my mind that I want to do now just at a higher level right. and doing more of it. That's it. Right. You just now leverage it. You now just stack it. So what do these people need to get started? Why aren't they starting? We all know the answer is fear. But the difference with you guys or me or anybody who's followed through is we're more afraid of the, what life would be like if we don't follow through than the person who's willing to settle for what they got and kind of hope it'll change and maybe purchase something for the moment and then not follow through on it. It's almost like people, overachievers, have a little more fear. They're a little more afraid of missing out. They're afraid of not being there or they got a strong enough reason to follow through. So I'd say if you're looking at home, you want to give somebody some value, go, where do I start? I'm sick of this. That's a damn good place. That's probably where they bought the product in the first place, but now to they're not... escape from that for just a minute. What's that? They bought, it, they bought the product to escape from that state. Just, just for a moment. A yeah. So cause, cause, well, guess what? What makes people excited is progress. You don't have to be at the goal yet to feel alive again. You have to make progress. And the first step to progress and make a decision and buying the product. But then they don't do the second step, right. which is open the damn thing up. I think another powerful distinction that you're hitting on here is the fact that a lot of people that have breakthroughs in their lives, like including Frank and I both in different, you know... Um, success stories, situations, whatever you want to call them, is that, you know, people typically hit rock bottom yeah. before that must is a reality. You're right, you're right. So in thinking of that, you know, because a lot of things as well, like we hear in marketing, you know, like if you had a gun to your head right now and you had to make money in the next, you know, 48 hours, what would you do? And that really resonates with people. But so I just wanted to bring this into the conversation because I think a big part of the market of all these people aren't people that have their backs completely against the wall yet. That's, that's right. Okay, so they're not in a must situation yet. They're in a desire situation where right. they're okay in their lives. They do have big dreams and ambitions. They do want greater things, but it's not pushing them yet to the point where they will do what it takes to master to the something. Must. So, so what do you think? How, how do people go from not having their backs against the wall when they have no choice to say, I'm totally sick of this, right. to, to conditioning their minds to go from their situation where they are, which may be okay, yeah. to getting something greater. Well, think about this. What pisses you off and what excites you is all relative. You know, $300 a week, no, $2,500 excites him more, that memory to this day, than even the million bucks, you know, he did in his first 24-hour version, right? Or you breaking the form in a mile, a million bucks. That must have been out of your mind. Tell me about that for a second. What did that feel like? You make a million bucks in 24 hours, nobody in the history of the Internet's done it. Euphoria. Yeah. It's just unbelievable what was your it wasn't even about the money it that's exactly weird. right that's exactly it wasn't right. really about the money no it wasn't. I wasn't thinking like oh that's how many cars I can buy or, no I, it just wasn't it was just uh, it was just breaking through like another like barrier of, of, of progress so at that point it wasn't about your back to your wall 
at that point, what it was really it was about... was a further point for my fear, is what it really was. Further point for your fear, and for some people, and I think in some cases, it's also a recognition of who I am and what I'm capable of. So for somebody whose life is already great, this is about, what if I could take on another skill that could create more freedom for my life? And just saying, I'm not going to go out and try and do it all perfectly right now. What I'm going to do for the next eight weeks, I'm going to do one, I'm going to create a little ritual. I'm going to do one thing a day to condition my mind, right, so that I get strong, so I follow through. I'm going to read something. I'm going to listen to something. I'm going to immerse myself. I'm going to go for an intense jog, or I'm going to go lift weights, but I'm going to do it consciously to get in a state where I'm going to follow through. That's number one, because people follow through when they're in state. Second, I'm going to get clear about why this is a must for me. It's not because my back's against the wall, but because I want to master an area of life that could create some freedom. I'm not going to master it overnight, but I got the system. I got the plan. I'm going to do one thing a day. I'm going to work on one subject a week. This week's going to be about figuring out what the right product or industry is. Next week's going to be basics of building traffic. And each week, I'm going to make a little progress, and I'm going to get to a goal, whatever that is. I'm going to make 1000 bucks, my 300 bucks in a week. I'm going to get to my 2500 That first 2500 is the most excited. Unbelievable. The first $300. It's I remember the most life-changing, too. It is the most life-changing. I remember I was supposed to be a truck driver making 24000 a year because I'd be making the most anybody in my family had ever made. How'd that work out for you? Yeah, very, very well. Thank God I'm not driving a truck, right? I think you could so pull I, the truck. Probably. I figured I could, out, I could pull it with my finger, man. I could do it with my teeth. I could pull yeah. it with my teeth, right? Thirty-six grand a year was the goal. If I could make three grand in a month, when I did that, was out of my mind. And then it was like, could I make ten grand a month? Then it was ten grand in a day. Then a hundred grand a day. Then could I make a million dollars in a day? I had a day where I made four hundred million dollars in a day. The stock value of the company I took public, my personal stock. But it was the probably four? after I did it, though, so it doesn't really count. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> You're right. People don't remember who's first, Tony. <laughs> Four hundred totally million, a million. Yeah, who cares? Who cares? No, I'm, just, I'm not saying that's, it's that's brag. amazing, though. I'm not saying no, no, brag. No, no, of course. It's they told me when I was on stage, I had this audience of about fifteen thousand people at the Continental Center. It was during a stretch break. I was doing what I loved, rocking the house. Everybody's going crazy, and they go, "The stock's worth you know, four hundred million bucks right now." I was like, "Wow, that's cool." It's like. Okay, that's, I don't want to sound stupid, it's like, what's next? And I went right back to what I loved. Once you break through, then it just becomes a game. The people that are getting your products have not yet broken through in most cases. The breakthrough happens by conditioning your mind every day, by feeding it a role model or story. It's putting yourself in a peak state where you fall through by getting physically strong. It's creating a little ritual of doing a little bit each day, and then you get momentum. But the most important thing of all is what we start out with. Why? Absolutely. Why is it a must for you? It doesn't have to be you're against the wall, but it has to be something you're hungry for, because the only difference in people is hunger. And if you're not hungry, get around people that are hungry and something will hit you. You watch a conversation, you get around people that are doing better, and all of a sudden you start going, uh, my life sucks. I remember I went to a guy in, in L.A., he's one of the most multi-billionaire guys, I'll never forget, and I lived in the Del Mar Castle, and I was really proud. That was like the symbol of me having taken myself from being poor to providing for my family this great place. It's built from castles in Europe overlooking the ocean not far from you. And I went to this guy's house. He's a billionaire. He took me down to his wine cellar. I don't even drink wine. I went through this whole thing. At the end of the night, I was depressed. I lived in a Del Mar tenement as far as I was concerned. I really was. I was like, I live in a crappy place.